Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Lewis, founder of Real Health Innovations. I'm a medical scientist with credentials from the Harvard School of Public Health and a degree from MIT. Real Health Innovations is a health creation company. Our goal is to help people prevent, slow, stop, and reverse chronic diseases, the diseases that really affect quality of life, longevity. And I want to talk to you today about why you may have to take supplementation or eat organic food. So let's just look at the way we take in food, where we take in nutrition. We either take in our nutrition through animals or fish, um, and we take it in through plants. But the animals take the food in, they take in plant food or food from the sea. So we have to look at the source of our nutrition to really understand why nutrition may be impacting our health today. So we are what we eat or drink, and our foods are deficient in vital nutrients. And vital nutrients and essential nutrients, essential in particular, are those that we can't produce on our own. We must take them in from food to be healthy. So processing is a major problem. Let's take a look at this chart from nutritionsecurity.org, and it's simply a diagram of, in 1900 we had very little heart disease and heart disease mortality, but it's ramped up significantly through the last century. And if we look on the other side, the mirror image of this, is this the amount of essential and vital nutrients found in our, in our food supply? So this is looking at calcium, magnesium, and iron in cabbage, lettuce, tomatoes, and spinach. Staple vegetables that are now relatively deficient in vital and sometimes essential nutrients. And now mechanized farming and GMOs and all that have allowed us to create foods and produce vegetables on land that's highly deficient in nutrients, yet we're still able to produce bountiful, bountiful uh, harvests, but they're deficient. And we're seeing this in various types of conditions, particularly heart disease. Water, the waters we're drinking, we're filtering the waters. We, yeah, we have hard water, we're taking the minerals out. So even our beverages are somewhat deficient. I love vegetable drinks, but if the vegetables are coming from overprocessed fields, then the vegetables are nutrient deficient as well. And society is paying a high price through the cost of chronic disease. So we are what we don't eat. And what we're not eating is enough fish and foods and vegetables with enough minerals. But we're eating plenty of corn. The farm-raised salmon are fed corn. The cattle are fed corn. The corn is GMO and it's, it's produced in a way that they can be produced with very poor quality uh, soils. So we're loaded with omega-6s from corn, but grass-fed cows, which we don't have anymore except in smaller farms, have a lot of omega-3s. Yes, we're fertilizing, but we tend to put just four nutrients back on the fields, whereas we need up to 25 vital nutrients. We're processing even our salt. So people are now buying sea salt, but the refined salt pulled out all those vital nutrients from the salt. So what is the model for good health? And I would argue that the Nile Valley is the, the model on earth today, whereas this valley, this fertile valley, supported civilization and, and intellectually advanced civilization for 10,000 years. How did it happen from Lake Victoria? The, the valley, the Fertile Plain Farming Valley flooded every winter. What did it flood with? Slightly saline water and all the nutrients from the soils that washed off of Kilimanjaro. So we had very rich soil and that's why we had health. Now, when you look at America, <clears throat> here's our farm belt and all the water is cycling off the land and into the Gulf of Mexico. We're losing all the minerals. It's all winding up in the ocean. And that's why these fields are deficient and our vegetables are also deficient. So let's just look. Not only are, are our vegetables deficient, but America eats the SAD diet, the standard American diet, which is very nutrient deficient. So if this is an American plate and this is a Korean plate, let's, what do these numbers mean up here? This is the number of cardiovascular deaths. So we're at 78 and Korea is at 26. The quality of the plate of food makes a big difference. Now in the Korean case, we're seeing 
a lot of vegetables, and this is kimchi, which is fermented cabbage, very healthy, a lot healthier than the high fructose corn syrup on the Belgian waffle. Next slide. So the next place that demonstrates profoundly good health compared to America is France. We call it the French paradox because they eat everything that the American Heart Association says is bad for your heart. So it's 55 million people whose heart disease rate is 30 compared to ours, 78. They're almost three times lower than Americans in terms of heart disease and heart disease mortality. So what is this, this bad thing that the French are doing? Yes, they're having a little wine, but they eat meats, they eat pate, they eat fatty cheeses, they eat a very fatty diet. Their breads are stale by noon. They're eating um, food from local farms. So here's, a, here's another case study. The Mid-Victorians of England, 1870. Now we used to think that they didn't live very long, but if you look at 1870, the demographics, if they lived past the age of five, you lived as long as we live today. They had, yes, infectious disease where the vulnerable populations, the children, died at very high rates. But if you made it past five, you lived long, and you had one-tenth of degenerative diseases that we report today. And the reason why, they had small farms, they had farms, they had gardens in their backyard, and when they ate a chicken, they ate the whole chicken, the meat, the liver, the heart, everything. And the liver is extremely high in nutrient density that our foods today are not. So the Obama administration actually took a stand and said, we need to go towards the small farm and, the, and empower the individuals to create healthy food at their own home. So they created a, a, a garden in the back of the White House. And a solution you have, which isn't too expensive, is in the summertime go to farm stands or have a home garden and something as simple as growing sprouts in your house is a food that's very high in nutrient density. So really if you're, if you're shopping and, and buying food from large farms, your plate, if you want to be healthy, should probably look a little bit like this. You need to take supplements to make up for the deficiencies we have in our foods. Here's option two. Obviously, going to farm stands and, and getting as, as uh, close to organic food as possible, but take this route when you go through the grocery store. Go to the outside of the entire store and you'll get food much richer in nutrients compared to if you shop the inside aisles. So that's a tip you can do that's still very economical. Buy frozen vegetables uh, out of season. They're not very expensive and much better than buying the processed foods in the middle aisles. So real health is all about preventing, slowing, stopping, and reversing chronic diseases. The place to start is by feeding your body, which will feed your immune system and will help you prevent chronic diseases.